Fatiha and then we go to the the whole surah here. Yeah. I'll just put myself in a oops, myself here. Yeah. I guess I can work there, put myself here. Yeah. Okay. So why do we say the first part? Why do we say the first part? So it's, it begins here, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is basically just like the opening, the beginning. And this ikhtilaf, whether it's the first part of, of Surah Fatiha, as the Shafi'is would hold, or whether it's the opening for every surah, as the Hanafis will hold. So there's different uh, opinions, but that's like the opening. And then the first... Um, and we mentioned that that could be a Jumatul Ismiya, Jumatul Fi'liya, depending on how you understand Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And then the next verse is Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And let me just see if I can just uh, write this down here. So this year, um, let's take a blue pen. This year, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki Yawmiddin is all one sentence. One sentence. So hopefully you remember that because Alhamdu is the the Mubtada. The Mubtada. And the Lillahi is a harful jar and Ism Majroor in place of the khabar. All praise is to Allah. And then the words in red one Two, three, four. All the words in red, one, two, three, four, are all sifas. They're all descriptions of Allah. They're all descriptions of Allah. Oops, I lost that there. They're all descriptions of Allah. So when you're reading Surah Fatiha, the first part we are reading are all descriptions of Allah, and it's all a jumlatul ismiyah. Ajumnatul Ismiya. So <clears throat> we mentioned a few things. The, the, the first thing we mentioned is Allah uses four four sifas to describe himself. Two of those sifas, Rabbil Alameen, the master, the Lord of all of the worlds, and Maliki Yawmiddin, the owner of the day of judgment, those are two words of power and might and authority. And Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim are words of softness, love, forgiveness, uh, mercy. So in other words, this qualities of Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim are in a sense at the core of the description. And it is surrounded in a sense by Rabbil Alameen and Maliki Yawmiddin. And this is consistent with Allah's... Uh, uh, verses and a hadith about katab ala nafsi rahma he wrote upon himself uh, rahma wa rahmati wa siyat kulla shay and my rahma encompasses everything wa rahmati sabaqat ghadabi and my rahma outstrips my anger many many uh, hadith and uh, ayat about Allah's rahma being, being central and we find in the description of Allah here, His Rahmah is central. So the point I want to make is that we can consider the we can consider the Bismillah Rahman Rahim to be like a uh, like a prologue, like an opening. This is an opening, and then we can consider this here to be the the first sentence of the. Of the of the of the of the Fatiha. So in other words, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is like the opening. You you open in the name of Allah, who is ar-Rahman, is completely and entirely full, filled with rahmah. Ar-Rahim is eternally filled with rahmah. That is the opening, and then the first complete sentence is Alhamdulillah. That all praise is for, and all gratitude is for Allah. And we're going to discuss why Jumatul Ismiya a bit later. Let's get on. And then after we have spoken about that, spoken about Allah, because the, the, the beginning begins with Allah. Then the next two words are Iyaka Na'budu. The next two words are Iyaka Na'budu. Now, 
for the next two words, what does na'budu mean? Or, or no, what does it mean? What type of word is na'budu? Ism fi'lu harf. It's a fi'l. It's a fi'l. Now, where is the fa'il? Or, or how do you translate na'budu? We worship. We worship. So where is the where is the we? Yeah. Inside. It's inside. inside. So there's a there's an inside. So how do you say we in Arabic? Nahnu. Anna. Anna is I. It is? Nahnu. Nahnu is going to be it's going to be so in other words, inside there there is a it's really hard to write like this, but I'll try inshallah. There is a, a nahnu. There is a, a nahnu inside here. So in other words, na'budu is a verb. Is the fi uh, madi or mudari? Madi. It is a? Madi. Madari. Madi or mudari? Mudari. Think, think about your mudari scale. Yaf ya budu ya budu na ta budu ya bud na ta budu ta budu na ta budu na ta bud na a budu na budu. It is a mudari verb, present tense verb. Now, where is the maf'ul be for na budu? Who are we worshiping? Yeah. So the iyaka, good, the iyaka is the maf'ul and bihi. So what I want you to see here, that this thing, that this two words here are a full sentence. They are a, a full sentence. Iyaka, iyaka means what? Iyaka means the same as what? I'll give it to you on top here. Iyaka means the same as this here. What is this here? It's like child writing. Anta. Anta. What does anta mean? Anta, 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 anta. Anta means what? You. 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 To how many people? To you. One. One. One person. One person. Technically one male. So anta and iyaka mean the same thing. Anta and iyaka mean the same thing. Uh, it's a bit difficult to explain, but when you put anta in Naspun, it becomes iyaka. But let's not go into that. But anta and iyaka means the same thing. So what is the grammar label on top of, of, of iyaka? What's the grammar label on top of Iyaka? It hasn't been It's a maf'ulun b. It's a maf'ulun b. So this is the maf'ulun b. Good. Maf'ulun b. And then, when you come to this here, this here, let's look at this here, and let's take out the waffle here, just take this here. The word nasta'inu. Nasta'inu. Nasta'inu is a verb is a verb that we haven't done before. That's the mm. the last verb we'll do is nasta'inu. But it's a verb, what we say that's a verb on the tenth verb. We've only done the first verb. So nasta'inu is a is a verb we haven't done before. But nasta'inu, if I give you the root it is, it came comes from ain wow noon. Aun. Ain wow noon. And aun means help. Or aid, assistance. So nasta'in, you can see by the na, nasta'in means we seek help, we seek aid, we seek assistance. So this is a verb, and inside this verb there is also a nahnu. There's also a nahnu inside there, the we. And the iyaka is the same as the iyaka there, it means anta, and this iyaka there is maf'ulun. 
be here. So lots of uh, ink on the slide here, but it's very simply that we have two words, which is one sentence. It is a verb-based sentence, jumlatul fi'liya. The fi'l is na'budu. The fa'il is the nahnu inside the we. And the, who, is the, who is the action done to? Who is the worship done to? It is done to anta, you. You one person referring to Allah. Who are we worshipping? You one, you Allah. And then nasta'in is the, iyaka nasta'in is going to be another verb. Nasta'in is the verb. The doer is the nahnu inside. We are seeking help. We are seeking aid. And who are we seeking it from? We are seeking it from you, one person, Allah. Okay. Are you all good with the grammar? Ma, ma, Maulana, can you just repeat no. the uh, nasta'in, the so root nas letters? Okay, the nasta'in, the root letters are ayn, waw, nun. Ayn, waw, nun. So let me just go quickly here. Um, let me just get a browser for you quickly. And then what we can do is we can look up the word so we know the word as well. Oops, not that. Let's go to there and let's go to Quran.com. And if you ever if you ever if you ever don't know a root letter of a verb of, of any word in the Quran, a useful site to go to is um it's time to get this thing to move. A useful site is Quran Hive. So a useful site is Quran Hive. Quran Hive. So let's go there. We open Surah Al-Fatiha. I think you have to, we have to, it's good to use all these tools that we have nowadays. So if I go to Surah Al-Fatiha and I go to any word and I scroll over it, you'll see there it, it shows you we ask for help and next to it it has a Ain, a Wow, and a Noon. So it gives you the root letters. Shukran. If I go to Na'abudu, it gives you abada. So any word you're looking for. So then I'm going to go to the dictionary. I'm going to go type Ain, Wow, Noon. Sorry, I made a mistake. Ain, Wow, Noon. And I'm going to look up for Aun. Aun. Then I'm going to find the word Aun here. But you see, this three... Roman numeral three and Roman numeral four and three and X, which is 10 and V1, which is six. This we do next year, inshallah. But Nasta'in is the X, is the 10th verb. So Nasta'in is this one here. To ask or call for someone's help, to turn to someone for help, to seek help, uh, re, uh, resort, have, res, uh, have, res, uh, have recourse to make use. This is all going to be help. And you can see the word Aunia means Help, aid, assistance, succor, relief, support, packing, all of those things. So this is where it's going to, where we're going to find it. Now, what I want to do here, which is, I like doing here, is I like looking at comparative uh, translation, just because you are doing translation. So we look at comparative translation here. So let's look at the translation. You alone we worship and you alone we ask for help. Next one. It is you we worship, it is you we call for help. You alone do we worship, you alone do we turn for help. The alone, you alone, you only, you alone, you we worship, you you alone. What word do you see in the translation that you don't see in the Arabic? Alone. Alone, or some people say only. Can you see many, many translations? Us. Sorry? Mola. That come from the reason because Iyaka is you one male. Is it just emphasizing that it's it's that one? It's the anta. Uh, not necessarily because okay, I'll, I'll explain the answer now. Um, let me ask you a different question, Pratofik. How can we say? You know, if I say, if I say. Nasaraka. What's the meaning of that? Oh, sorry, not, not Nasaraka. If I say Ansuruka, what does Ansuru mean? How? Uh, me? 
Ansuru means so Yansuru means he is helping. Ansuru means what? Helping. I am helping. And and Ansuruka? I am helping you. Good. So how could we say we are we worship you? Nansuruka. A oh, worship or how worship is worship is na buduka. Na buduka. So you, you're with me? So another way to say we worship you is to say what? Na buduka. Yes. That's another way to say we worship you is na buduka. So what I what, why I wanted to show the translations, I wanted to see that many translators will add the word alone, but the word alone doesn't exist in the Arabic. The word alone doesn't exist in the Arabic. But there is a reason why they, they add the word alone. I'll discuss the reason why. And the reason why is, is the reason why Brother Tawfiq mentioned now. He mentioned now that what? That we worship you could be said na'buduka. It could be said na'buduka. Allah could have Allah could have added a Allah could have taken away this here and Allah could have added a a ka at the end and you would translate that as what? Na'budu ka. We worship you. Is Na'budu ka a full sentence? Yes, yes Mama. Give me all the, the, the labels of Na'budu ka. It's a fil uh, abada. Inside is the file, the we, and the yes, customer good. wouldn't be. The math wouldn't be good. So we have we have all the we have a whole sentence here. So what Allah did is Allah didn't do this. Allah took this here and Allah moved this to the front. So the normal way is to put the maf ulun be at the end. You normally say we did this to something. You put the maf ulun be at the end. What Allah did here is he moved the maf ulun be to the beginning. Why do you think he moved the maf ulun be to the beginning? emphasis for emphasis uh, explain so it's 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 starting off so almost like a uh um, creating a, a definiteness um but starting that he's saying that um um how can i say it um yeah it's emphasizing the you or, or emphasizing uh the the, the 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 maf'ulun bihi Allah that we worship Allah. Um, yes, yes, and yes. That's why you put it put at the start. Good. So another word we can use uh, besides emphasis is the is the the meaning of ex exclusivity. Allah is putting the you in front there because the you is exclusive. Na'buduka. It's almost like you can say we worship you and we worship this and we worship that. I'm not saying you can, you are saying that, but you you could add that into into the sentence grammatically. But iyaka na'budu is there, it's, it's, it's made more exclusive. The you is made more exclusive because the maf'ul bi is moved before the verb. So therefore, many translators will add the word alone. They should actually technically add, add the word alone in brackets. That, that would be more proper to say you in brackets alone because the alone part is not there. The alone part is derived from the fact that the maf'ul bi has moved from the end of na'budu to precede na'budu. That's where the alone part comes. The fact that this has been moved from ka to iyaka, from after to before. And that is where the alone comes, that iyaka, you, and you alone, Allah, na'budu, do we worship. Next. Can you see the same thing happens here? This could have been nasta'inuka. We seek help from you. But again, this has been moved to the beginning. And you and you alone, do we seek our own, do we seek our help, our aid, our assistance? So both of these maf'ul and bihis are moved to the front. Why? For exclusivity. Okay, any questions on that? Any questions on that? 
Okay. I'll take your silence as a tacit approval that everything is fine so far. Next. When we study any word in Arabic, we have to study the whole root word. So the word na'budu, what other words with abada come to mind for you? To you? Ibada and uh, ab. Okay, what does ibada mean? Worship, isn't it? Worship. Worship or worshipping. What does abd mean? It's slave. Slave. So abd is a, a slave. I want to just focus on those two things. And I think those two things are important. When you say worship, like obviously we have something like we have formal worship in, in Islam. We have like salah. What happens to salah? Is salah all the time or only sometimes? Sometimes, Mona. It's sometimes. <laughs> How about an abd if you were a slave? Is it sometimes or all the time? All the time. All the time. So, what I do want to mention is that the word na'budu encompasses both the fact that to you and you, Allah, na'budu, we are slaves. We are in this permanent state of being your abd. We are in this permanent state of being your abd. And also encompasses that because we are your abd, we are going to manifest our ubudiyah, our slavehood to you, our slavehood to you through ibadah, through worship. So in other words, the, the worship is something which is occasional. You worship Allah occasionally, not all the time. Like when you, I mean, I mean when I'm saying now occasionally, I mean an active form of dedicated worship like salah or like hajj or like something dedicated no you most of the day you're not in active worship most of the day you're in you're sleeping with your family you're working you are like carrying on in this world so your worship your formal worship is only occasional for a period but your formal worship is there to represent your state it's not like you worship allah ta'ala and we say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Now you are free from being an abd. No, is that even when your formal worship is, is, is over, when the action is over, the state remains. So what, what is contained within na'buru is both the state of permanent state of being an abd as well as the verb of ibadah, of manifesting that state. And obviously we manifest, Muslims manifest that state by putting your most noble part your 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 head your face on the ground i was reading the the biography of of malcolm x uh, it's really an amazing book actually the, i would encourage everybody to read the biography it's one of the the most profound moving books I, I, i've read in my life is that uh, the biography by, by alex haley and in there he mentions that when he was thinking of becoming a muslim and he was in prison he, he i think he mentioned it took him a week to make sujood for for him to to be able to humble himself in that way it took him like a week to be able to place his head on the ground we obviously do it automatically because we we reared like that and we we raise like that but it's a very profound action it's a very profound action that you you bow before allah ta'ala there's something also almost ancient about it the fact that muslims still we in the mall, we in the airport, we, wherever we are, we on the side of the road. We, if time for salah, we would stop, and we would we would put our heads on the ground because the entire earth is a masjid, and masjid means a place of sujood, a place of putting your head on the ground. And that is profound because we 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 we, we manifest our slavehood in such a an overt way and such a beautiful thing, actually, a beautiful symbol of our 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 slavehood, our ubudiyah to Allah Ta'ala. And also, it's much more preferable to say you're an abd of Allah than to say you're a slave of Allah, because slave within the English language has a lot of negative connotations, uh, and the word abd is something which is beautiful and noble uh, before Allah Ta'ala. And abd is who you are before Allah Ta'ala. So, Iyaka, you and you alone, Allah, na'budu, do we enslave ourselves? And you and you alone, Ya Allah, do we 
enter into a state of ubudiyah, of worship, of prayer, and to you and you alone are we abds, are we your, your slaves. Wa and iyaka and you and you alone Allah nasta'een we seek help what does it mean if we seek help do we, we don't seek help from other people like if you're sick don't you seek help from a doctor so wouldn't that be contradicting the verse here because the verse says you and you alone do we seek help Bolana, is it uh, that you uh first uh, seek help uh, where you uh, need help in, in, in conformity with your whatever you did on earth, but you don't forget to ask Allah to guide the people that you're going to. Okay, good. So, so deal, deal short, Bismillah. I think that um, man is under the illusion that we can give help like the doctor but not realizing that the doctor's hikmah actually also comes from Allah, ultimately. Okay, good. And how about the shifa? Where does the shifa come from? Similarly. Okay. So so basically, uh, uh, it's a, maybe a long discussion, which I want to have with you now, is that a the true position of a, of a Muslim is that the Muslim almost holds like two views at the same time. The, a Muslim definitely operates within the world of cause and effect. If you if you want wealth, you get a job, you work, and then some money will come your way. If you want to, if you're sick and you want an ailment, you go to a doctor, you get some medicine, you get some rehab, and you experience some shifa. So a Muslim always operates. If you want your house to be safe, you don't say I trust in Allah and you leave your doors open. You lock your door. You have a burglar bars. You put an alarm because you. You will live in the world of cause and effect. So in other words, a Muslim acts in the world of cause and effect. At the same time, a Muslim always believes that ultimately behind everything is Allah. So behind the the like the like the the the, the picture of you going to work and the money coming because of your job, behind all of that, Ar Razaq, Allah is the one who provides, and He is actually the one giving you giving you your your wealth. Behind the doctor and the medicine, that might be in the world of cause and effect, but behind all of that, Allah is the one that is causing the, the cure. Behind your burglar bars and your alarm, Allah is the one who is providing safety. So ultimately, a believer always attributes like the primary causation to Allah Ta'ala, and the world of cause and effect is, is secondary. However, we live in both. It's not, it's not correct for you to say, I only trust in Allah Ta'ala and I don't take the means. That's not the way to, that's the way that that's not that's not the way of Islam. The Prophet Sallallahu didn't say that you must make dua for ilm and you must sit, sit at home. No, if you want the ilm, you have to go to a teacher. But when the teacher you go to the teacher, what does the teacher tell, tell you? Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma alamtana. Oh Allah, there is no knowledge for us except that which you Allah has taught us. In other words, Allah is the primary the holder of all ilm and he gives ilm but the means of learning and studying is just the, the means of cause and effect and we, we follow that so that when Allah says here Wa iyaka nasta'in, you must know that ultimately Allah, you and you alone ultimately you are the only one that we seek our help from in terms of the core of our belief yes we'll go through cause and effect and do the normal things but ultimately Allah is the one that we, we seek our, our help from and he alone, no one else is able to provide help. No one else, nothing else is able to provide help except Allah Ta'ala. So a beautiful verse, Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Okay. What I'm going to do, inshallah, I'm not going to put you into groups. I'm going to just give you, I must, I must start giving the class a bit of a break. So I'm going to give you just a, three minute or four minute break just to relax and maybe take a, a cup of coffee a cup of tea or 